Hi, this is uh, Jay again, and I'm doing the uh, the third little video in my little biochar series. Um, I'm very pleased, and I appreciate the feedback that I've gotten from so many people on the first uh, two videos. Um, that's great that uh, that uh, seeing a, a real simple method uh, like just an open ground fire like this has inspired quite a number of people to give it a shot. And really, that's my goal. I, I I'd like to see you know, simple techniques be brought out because too often we, we focus on stuff that may in theory be, be very efficient, but actually in practice um, it becomes so complicated that people actually won't give it a go. And, and you know, what we've got here is a, is a, is a uh, technology that I think most people are willing to just bust out next week and give it a shot. Um, some people have been confused too. They say, well, you know, it's just a fire. I don't see what you're doing. Actually, maybe I wasn't clear about that in the previous video. It's not just a fire. It's actually a really shoddily built kiln. It's just that I'm building my kiln in the same manner that uh, somebody does by necessity in the rainforest. You don't have sheet metal to build a kiln. You don't have concrete to build a kiln. What do you build your kiln out of? You build your kiln out of wet wood. Um, and that's why it works, and that's why you can get the reduction fire, because it's actually the wet wood that creates the oxygen-free environment that the coals burn inside. Maybe that wasn't clear from the first video. And of course, being a really shoddy kiln, it burns up every couple hours, and I build another one around the one that just collapsed, and you can see that, well, it works, you know? It works. So uh, I'd say, yeah, give it a try, but maybe that helps a little bit. Anyway, onto a couple other ways I utilize okay. it. So one other thing that I thought I'd like to talk about is I've had some uh, feedback from a couple of guys who say, oh, well, you know, you know, I can see what you're doing. That's a great simple solution there, your fire on the ground, but it's not very efficient. Um, you know, if you use, uh, oh, this machine or that machine or this uh, process, or you do it with a barrel in a barrel, that's a popular one right now, it's more efficient and you can get higher, um, higher levels of yields you know, maybe 35% rather than 25. Well, you know, I'm sure that's probably true. And I've, in fact, I know that's true because here about two years ago, it was barrels that I was using. And actually before that, I went so far as to build a gasifier and I ran my generator on that gasifier for about six months until the hydrogen started to screw the valves up in the thing. So, you know, I, I have walked that road um, and I'm doing what I'm doing because actually for my needs, it is more efficient. Um, there's more to efficiency than simply yield and mass. There's also efficiency in terms of time. What I'm showing here is what I've got 500,000 square feet of. Um, if I were to try to take this on and process this with a barrel, I'd be lucky to process 200 pounds of it a day. Um, we can do a little quick back of a, you know, a notebook calculation, but there aren't enough lifetimes for me. <laughs> to even make a dent in this if I can process only a little small amounts like that. Um, you know, on the ground, if I'm really pushing with a chainsaw, I can put, I can process a couple of thousand pounds a day. And all of a sudden I can actually make a dent in restoring this forest here that really needs a helping hand. It's pretty degraded. Um, some of it's pretty good, some of it's not. You gotta realize here in Hawaii, we've lost uh, most of our native birds um, of the trees that are here and still exist. They're really oppressed by a lot of uh, indain, uh, invasive weed trees. I mean, you see a lot of guava back in there. So yeah, I'm taking on this as well. You know, it's not just an acre of food, but as much as I can do to restore the habitat around my food forest as well. So I thought I'd put that uh, little bee in your bonnet. Um, scalability is part of efficiency. Um, while a barrel might be helpful for somebody in a backyard setting, you know, on a homestead, it's going to be one hell of a big barrel. Okay, here's here's the next thing. <laughs> now this is going to seem so stupid simple again that uh, I mean it's almost embarrassing to bring it up. I mean an awful lot of talk is is made about oh you know you got to properly condition and you know take care of your uh, and inoculate inoculates the nice word your charcoal. Well, actually this is my little inoculation. Um, box here. Um, basically, when I make my charcoal and I get done with it, I just pitch it in under the chicken coop. I know that sounds silly, but it kills two birds and one with one stone, uh, you know, pun intended. Um, 
it not only absorbs all the stink and funk that comes out of the tail end of a chicken, um, the chickens also very effectively inoculate my charcoal and it just leaves a nice clean uh, spot for me to shovel that stuff out of there whenever I need it. And you know, there's, there's most of a yard in there I expect and you know, I go through that once every couple of weeks. So, you know, there's something to try, another simple solution. Okay, so this this particular part of my forest garden here, um, and I guess I got to say, you know, people have asked, well, how much have you got in here at this point? Um, I suppose, you know, intermixed within the uh, the the native forest here that I'm trying to restore, it's it's pretty degraded after all. It's got a lot of problems, and um, that's part of the situation. But of the part here that I've got that's actually food forest, uh, this area here that we're looking at is is the first part that I probably put into charcoal. It's close to three years old at this point. And you'll no if you were here, you would you would note that there's a, a marked difference in the, the quality and texture of the soil. And I know it sounds crazy, but it seems like there's a lot more dirt here when I got here. <laughs> I don't, I, that's the myth, you know, that's the myth that we're all looking for, but I swear, you know, it's, uh, a guy starts to wonder, but uh, here, here in the next little bit, I'm going to see if I can take some of this stuff in and get it tested and get a get a good look because we don't have very many good examples actually of of uh, biochar tests, you know, of that kind of magnitude of time, you know, in a natural environment and seeing what it really degrades into. But um, hey, yeah, lots of food, lots of taro, lots of green beans. They're looking kind of shot, but you know, again, sweet potatoes, coffee, all sorts of stuff. It's it's loaded. Um, one thing that may seem completely self-evident, and for those people out there doing research, um, one of the things that, that you don't read about for some reason, which is really curious to me, uh, is how much of the biologic activity that we get out of biochar is simply related to the fact that you take a soil and you put charcoal in it and it ends up jet black. Um, gosh, it, it ends up a lot hotter. Like the solar radiation, the soil temperature must come up a couple of degrees. Um, I would certainly like to hear if somebody's out there who has done a study on that to see simply how much more solar radiation a jet black biochar rich soil absorbs uh, rather than one that's maybe not quite so dark. I'm sure that has a great deal to do um, with the uh, level of production that the soil puts out, especially when you're when you're putting plants in. But I haven't actually read anything anywhere that would give me um, any indication as to how how to quantify that. Anyway, I thought I would mention that for you uh, who are going to be putting stuff in and perhaps in a seed bed. Be aware that if you take a brown soil and you make it jet black, stuff is going to jam out of the ground a lot faster for no other reason that you're changing. Uh, the ecosystem of the soil and you're raising your soil temperature probably a couple of degrees. Anyway, that's about it for today.